stronger for it. Um, same goes for the girl. Um, it's easy to bow down to pressures from your peers and from other children of your own age. They all have cut hair. Um, they may drink, they may smoke. And it's very easy to fit in, to feel that you want to fit in with others. And so you, you do what other people do. Um, but that's it's almost against the whole principle of Sikhism. You're, um, as a Sikh, you're distinctive. So if you do stand out, you should be proud of that and not say that I want to conform to what everyone else does. Rather, you should say, well, I'm a Sikh. These are my principles. They're what I think is right. And in fact, you should try and convince them of your views. Um, and I don't want anyone here to feel that they need to conform to other kids or for them to feel that they are alone in any way. It's a very large Sikh community in this country and if you go through what everyone is experiencing now, at the end of it you'll be a much better, much stronger person and hopefully a better Sikh. I was talking to one girl earlier and she said, well, yeah, okay, fair enough, yeah, um, so everyone here is a Sikh. So why shouldn't I cut my hair? I'm, I'm not convinced, I'm just not convinced. Um, I'm presumably being told why you shouldn't cut your hair and why that is a basic part of um, our religion. It's because that's the way that, that's the form that God gave you. He gave you hair and as a result, um, we try to keep that form as much as we can. I mean, some people feel yeah, they are much more comfortable with their hair cut. There's nothing wrong with that. But you shouldn't feel ashamed or you shouldn't feel that you have to cut your hair in order to conform to other people. And as a result of keeping your hair, you retain your identity and you remain distinct. Um, another thing I was talking to uh, a few girls about was uh, things like cultural things, which are apart from religion, things like Bhangra and, and Giddha. Um, now, in, in India at the moment, there's a revival of Giddha. It's, um, it's almost in, it's hip, it's, it's what the youngsters do now. Um, all the young girls are really into Giddha, they have competitions and there are prizes, and it's almost it's a, um, it's at a state level within Punjab. Now here, Giddha is dying out, and I mean, everyone goes to DCS concerts, and other ones can and everyone does what's now called Bonga, and Giddha itself is, it's diminishing, it's getting less, it's, it's losing um, its appeal, especially to girls of, well, our, my generation and those who are younger. Um, it may not be as spectacular as Bonga, or maybe not to you, but it's still part of your heritage, it's still a part of your culture, a part of the Punjabi culture. Not just the culture, there are Hindus who do, will have exactly the same cultural background. And I think it's a shame to lose that in any way. Um, and I feel very sad that people who say, give that thought, don't want to do that. I think that's really, really sad. Um, and I hope that we give that and all the other cultural things are kept alive because it's you, it's the people sitting here that have to keep them alive. And if you're not interested in them, they'll die. They won't last more than five years, ten years, if you're lucky. It's up to you. It's no good saying, oh, well, you know, um, I don't really want to do that or someone else can do that because there may not be anyone else. It, it may just be down to you to do that. And so, in that respect, um, your parents and the people that have gone before you are relying on you to do that. And then it'll be up to you to teach the next generation and so forth. You can't rely on them forever to carry on doing and carrying your faith and carrying your culture. Just a 
ਮੰਗੀ ਫਿਰ ਜੁਰਵਾਰ ਮੰਗੀ ਫਿਰ ਪਤੇ ਮੰਗੀ ਫਿਰ ਅਜੀਤ ਮੰਗੀ ਤੇ ਫਿਰ ਜੁਰਵਾਰ ਮੰਗੀ ਤਾਂ ਬੋਲੀ ਕਾਲੀ ਵਿੱਚ ਸ਼ਹੀਦ ਹੋਏ ਤੇ ਫਿਰ
Holy today, when we're shared with others. Lala welcomed the Guru with great humility and kindness when he came. It also happened that Malik Baba, Mayor of Bhattin, was holding a great sacrificial feast. He expected all of the holy men to come to the feast, that he could gain a merit from them. When he heard that the Guru was in Sankar at the house of the Kapi Dalalu, he immediately sent a servant to invite the Guru, also accompanied with his followers. Baba believed the feast incomplete without all the holy men at his house, but the Guru did not accept the invitation. When the servant told Baba that the Guru had not accepted the invitation, Baba would not leave and would not give up. He sent the servant to bring the Guru. Still the Guru replied no and went to see Baba. When the Guru arrived at Baba's house, Malik Baba said to the Guru, You are a very strange man. You can, end, you can eat the food and look at the lower class of sugar, yet you refuse to eat my feast. The Guru answered, I have no class, nor do I sit in a special place. I do not eat any special food. Baba said, Why not? The Guru replied, Do you really want to know? Yes, of course. Then the Guru then the and asked Baba to ask one of his servants to fetch some food from the kitchen. And he asked Lala to fetch some food from his kitchen. When they both had returned, a large crowd had gathered round the Guru. When Guru Nanak had food from both kitchens, he took the food in each hand and squeezed from Bhagavad's food, drops, drops of blood fell out. From Lalu's, drops of milk. The crowd was most astonished. Malik Baba bewildered asked, Why did drops of blood fall from my food and milk from Lalu's? Mine is much more tasty and made of the finer ingredients, yet mine is blood stained. And from a poor man's house, Good with milk. Good luck, good night, answered. Well, no, your food or as you call it is not your food. It is drawn by other people's sweat and hard labor, then served by servants. On the other hand, Lalas makes his own food and for his own food, <coughs> and after the little he has, then his claim of sweet food is served by himself. Bobo learns his lesson that he should earn his living honestly.
God must only be used in certain things.
ਤਰਗੀ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਹੈ ਫਿਰ ਸਤਿਗੁਰੂ ਨਾਨਕ ਦੇਵ ਜੀ ਫਰਮਾਉਂਦੇ ਨੇ ਕਿ ਉਸ ਉਸ ਨੂੰ ਜੋ ਮਾਇਆ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਲਿਬਤ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਉਸ ਨੂੰ ਜੋ ਅਟੈਚਮੈਂਟ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਹਟ ਜਾਂਦੀ ਹੈ ਔਰ ਉਹ ਉਸ ਮਾਇਆ ਤੋਂ ਦੂਰ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਵੀ ਦਸਾਂਗਾ when the lord why do the master becomes compassionate he becomes kind then the true man there he says the man is no longer in the grip of the worldly attachments what the central idea is that you only by lord's grace and kindness and compassion we can simran we can meditate upon now and only by meditating upon now or we can be rid of this uh, worldly attachment that's the whole purpose of our life what is the answer is the is the initial contact you must be able to see i am i who you're trying to come to reach to talk to i'm looking at you all i'm not looking at a piece of paper that's what we want to do you need to feel part of your own you need to really feel part of your own group i'm not here talking to something a group which I can't see, but I'm like to the group of people who I'm trying to relate to. So that's very important. Eye contact is very important. Don't try and look at people. That's very important to leave. Well, I think after that, uh, uh, when you establish this initial contact, you need to clearly in your own mind that uh, have decided that the, what the time block of talk is going to be. And uh, then, of course, that particular topic needs to be introduced. So you if you say a few words, a few lines, and in a minute or so, just introduce the topic. Then after that, it might be that you will have uh, a, few, a few separate things which you want to uh, include in your talk. <coughs> and that's usually described as the breadth of your talk. And then of course you can take each of those in turn and develop that. And that's usually called the depth of your talk. And I think it's very important to have a good breadth and depth. Now, all that you should have worked out before. When you come to the stage, the first thing you do is you try and make contact. Then, of course, you recognize the presence of whoever is around, prominent. It, like in here, it's usually in Granta. You might even just go around and face on more events. Or, if there are some other uh, important people, you can just mention their name, like the Lord Mayor, Prime Minister, or whatever. And then, of course, you say you're here and invite you to give a talk on this, that, and the other. Then, of course, you can briefly outline exactly what the talk is going to be about, how you're going to be discussing it, etc. And then, of course, you begin. And then, as you begin, you take each item, you know, in, uh, in a nice orderly sequence, develop it, and then, in the end, summarize it. That's very important, you know, so that at least, uh, in the end, Sometimes there are lapses of memory, attention, etc. And it's important to leave people with a summary. All the time, it's very important to be clear. Clarity of thought up here is very important. And uh, clarity of speech is very important. Because if I can't get across what's up here, then I think the time is wasted. And uh, so in the end, be short, clear, leave a little message. It might be that you want to leave a message at the end of each point that you're trying to develop. But make sure that you're leaving, you're summarizing something in the end, and there's a message. And then of course you can put, you can actually conclude the whole thing, and then leave. And when you're leaving, don't leave in a rush. And some of you were saying, why don't you go, Kalsa and etc. was all over there. You know, when you're finishing, say, why don't you go Kalsa, why don't you get up there? Still looking at the people that you're trying to talk to. So don't rush anything. And uh, when you're done, it might be that they want you to stay behind and ask for an answer if you're not there, but usually they are. Stay back or be ready. That's the kind of a rough 
format which you need to be aware of. So uh, whenever you talk, divide your talk into various stages. The title, its introduction, a few points that you want to discuss about your talk, develop each little point, summarize, conclude, and then of course uh, be ready. Or think of some questions which people might want to ask. Okay, why did you get out of my way? I know quite a lot. I always say I know very little, 
But with your help, with your participation, let us see where we go. Now, uh, the topic that has been chosen, actually, it was left to me to choose. And I chose the topic, Brotherhood of Mankind. Right, I also thought last night whether to say brotherhood or sisterhood. Then I couldn't get away from the word mankind either. Now, it's very difficult to get away from those ideas, but nevertheless, they are there. And I would be very pleased if somebody comes along with a solution, alternative words, without losing the spirit that is there in Gurumanas and other Gurus and Guru Granth Sahib's thoughts. Now, the way I plan my time with you is this. First of all, I'm going to say, how is it that we are brothers and sisters? And then, if we are brothers and sisters, what is it that's in common? What do we do if we are brothers and sisters? I want you to think right from now till the end of the session, when it will be you who will be bringing the ideas, then I will collate them together, put them together, and let us see whether that is the type of society that we the six want, not for the six. Get away from the idea that there is a little society in a bigger society. To me, society is society of mankind. To me, political division, to me, the borders of countries are meaningless. Now, if we have those divisions, <laughs> Sikhism, or Sikhs, Hindus, and so on and so forth, then I think we are not following the teachings of our Gurus. We have to get out of this circle first, then go into the world and treat the whole world as family of men. Now, what are the things that we should be doing to say that we belong to that family? Now, and after that, once you have expressed your idea, in your groups, then we'll come back, and then we'll discuss, and we will say, what is the way forward? I, in my own mind, is clear that we haven't been able to give the message of our group to the whole world. We have failed. To some extent, we have succeeded. But there's much more ground to be covered. Right? That's what my aim is. What is that ground that we need to cover? So that what our, our Guru said, we really are is through Sikhs, through followers, through learners. Now let me now start with the idea that, how is it that we are brothers and sisters? The Holy Guru Granth Sahib, the scriptures of the Sikhs, begins with Japji Sahib, composed by our first Guru, Guru Nanak Dev. And Japji Sahib begins with Moor Mantra. The Sikh creed, what is it that the Sikhs believe in? Now the very first thing, could you tell me what is the very first thing? Is it a word? Is it a letter? Is it a number? Come on, I want to, you to participate. I'm not here to lecture you about anything. I want to see some hands. Number. Number. Can you see the number here in the Sikh temple anywhere? If you look around, I want to give other people some chance. Yes, you know? Where is it? Yes, it is here, it is there. Actually, you will see it in many places. Some people do have badges. Ik Onka. Now, that is where the, the Sikh religion starts. Ik Onka, and it's very, very basic. Very important, too. Ikkunkar, God is one. Many people said God is one, but not the way Guru Nanak did. He put the numerals. Nobody can change it. What it means is simply this. There is one and only one God. There aren't many gods. God is our father. Ek pita, ek 
Now, a lot of people in different religions, or the, some prophets did say there is one God, but the people began to say, yes, your God is not my God. Just as we can say, your dad is not my dad. I've got a different, different dad. They may be brothers, they may not be brothers. That is where the trouble starts to go. But my father is better than yours. My father is stronger than yours. And this way the scholars went from. Guru Nanak saw that this is the root cause, probably of most of the things in the world. So he said there is one and only one God. The only one God. If there is one and the only one God, it follows that we are his children. Now, can you say it with me? Ekonka. Go on. You say an effort in there. I will stop there for a while. I will just stop there for a while, please. Thank you very much. I'm going to stick to, to these to these two words. And I'm going to relate that only. I know there is much more to follow. And that is the basis of Japji. Japji is the, then explained in the whole of the Bhutan side. Right? There are many people who could talk about Hikunka for two, three hours easily. There are learned people who can do that quite easily. But I don't propose to do it this way. Right? Time is short, and we must make the most of the time that is given to us. Kartapur, he is the creator of all. God is one, he is the creator. If he is the creator and only one, it follows automatically, logically. That is how you should think that we are all his children. <laughs> now, could you imagine if we are all his children, what is the relationship between you and me, between each other? We are brothers, but all sisters. Brothers and sisters. One family then. Right? Now that is the topic. That is why I chose that brotherhood of mankind that we are brothers and sisters. We are one family. Now, did other people in the times of Guru Nanak and before, did they treat human beings as Brothers and sisters? No, they didn't. I can see some heads are already shaking. Right? Now what is it that divided the whole human race? Especially in India, in the Punjab where Guru Nanak Dev was born. Now, there were two religions at that moment and they were at loggerheads, quarreling, fighting, arguing. Now, the original religion of India was uh, Hinduism. Hinduism was caste traded, where there was no equality. People were divided, not only people say is it that, that Hinduism was divided into four castes. <laughs> Four castes, sub -cars, and so many, really hundreds of them. <laughs> and then there were some people who were outside this system altogether, called the Ashur, untouchable. They had no rights at all. They couldn't even go to any Hindu temples. They couldn't offer their prayers there. They couldn't leave their peta. Now that was the society when Guru Nanak Dev Ji was born when the United States you brought it. The same thing applies to Islam, religion of the Muslims. Now, Guru Nanak actually was a great dramatist. I wish we could be something like him for the great dramatist. He never said you are wrong. He proved that you were wrong, if you were wrong. Without saying it, that's the beauty of Guru Nanak Dev's approach to the human problems. And most of them were social problems. That is where my interest in lies. Now, having said that all are equal and that we are brothers by, the first step that Guru Nanak took was to have a companion who belong to so-called Islam religion, a 
and so called low caste democracy. <coughs> they were not very respectful in those days. Now, Guru Nanak befriended with him. He made friends with Mardana. It is said that uh, Mardana's name was not Mardana, it was Dana. And Guru Nanak Devi said, he changed his name to Marta, Mardana. Many people say that uh, Mardana's mother had two children who died before Mardana, and she automatically thought he's not going to live, so she said, Marjana. But Guru Nanak Dev, he said, he is my friend, he is Mardana, he won't die. Right? And that really proved to be right. His name still lived. Whenever we remember Guru Nanak, we remember Mardana. Mardana is with us. He hasn't he has left his body. His name lingers on, especially with the singer. And he is the one who was the constant companion of Guru Nanak Dev. Not even his wife stayed with him most of the time. Not even his children. Not even his sister, Bebenanti. But Guru. Uh, uh, but Madonna had the privilege to be with Guru Nanak Dev most of the time. And he was the luckiest person at that time. <laughs> now, many people questioned him, especially those people who believed in the caste system. How is it, Guru Nanak Dev Ji, that you are taking A, somebody who is not Hindu, B, somebody who is of a low caste? And Guru Nanak Dev Ji replied, He is my brother because God, our Father, has created the whole universe. Now that is where brotherhood started. Pai Mardana, Pai Bala. <laughs> According to the Jan Saki, the second companion that Guru Nanak Dev Ji had was Pai Bala. Now Pai is the highest respect in Sikhism that we can give to others. <laughs> Pai Gurdas Ji, Pai Buddha Ji, Pai Mani Singh Ji, Pai Jyot Singh Ji, Pai Veer Singh Ji, Pai Lalo, to whom uh, Guru Nanak Dev Ji went to <coughs> and he had his very meager meal, Kodre Roti, instead of a very dainty meal from Madhapakura. Guru <coughs> Nanak Dev Ji was the friend of the downtrodden, was the friend of the poor, rather than the friend of the rich and the friend of the proud people, so-called proud people. Now, having said that brotherhood of mankind, and then if you think you are brothers and sisters, what is the first thing that you would like to do, having listen to what I told you that there were divisions on the basis of religion and on the basis of caste system. That what would you like to do? Let me tell you what Guru Nanak Dev said between the age of 28 and 30 when he went into the court of God and God gave him some mission in life. He <laughs> disappeared in a river called Bain. So near Sulpanpur, and the very first word that he uttered after the he reappeared after three days, na koi Hindu na Muslima. There is nobody is Hindu, nobody is Muslima. The two important religions before Sikhism started. Now there are two ways that you can interpret it. That. One of the things, the way I would like to interpret is this, that when a man, when a child is born, as a child, we only say he's Muslim, he's Muslim, Hindu, and he's a Sikh, and so on and so forth. But basically, we are the children of God, so we are the all equal. Guru Nanak Dev Ji tried to break those divisions. It was a very daring step, I must say that, to say it in those days, you were signing your own death warrant. And I'm not joking. 
One Brahman said the Hindus, Muslims are good, Hindus are not bad. And for saying that, he was killed. To say it in a state where Muslims rule, that was a great step to say that. That there is nobody who is Hindu, there is nobody who is Muslim now. Because the rulers in those days were Muslims. It was a challenge to the rulers. When Guru Nanak Dev Ji was taken on that reality, he had to prove, and he did prove. And I'm not going to go into the details of their simply because I haven't got enough time. But what I want to tell you now is, since I told you what Guru Nanak's ideas were regarding that God is our Father, that we are children, that we are equal, we want to prove how can we be equal. Now, I don't know how we can do it. Saying is not enough. If Guru Nanak Dev said it, people didn't believe him. He had to prove it. Now, with your knowledge and with all the information probably you have brought with you, let's now get into our group and I want you, especially one word, if you possibly can, two words, three words, but not lines after line. I want you to think of ideas where if you are brothers and sisters and members of the same family, what do you do for each other? What are the things that you do for your brothers and sisters and including your mother and father? Now Guru Nanak Dev Ji said, Tu hai mera haath maata, tu hai mera pita. Guru Nanak Dev Ji said, Tu God, God is my mother, God is my father. Now, you have mothers and fathers one mother, one father, few brothers, few sisters, depending upon your family. Now you think for yourself and you discuss what is it that you do in your family so that everybody is treated equally, fairly, so on and so forth. What are the things that you must be doing all the time? Because the one word that comes to my mind and comes to your mind is this always. Especially the other say in my family, of course. Ah, oh, mommy, it's not fair. It is we who always wash up. It is we who always clean. What about Prepa? He never does those things. Right? No, it isn't fair. I don't want that word, you see. If you have to fare, what are other things? So many things revolve around to be fair. What is it you should be doing? So that your family is a happy family. Now, I want to just make it clear to you from that idea, I want to develop that if your family is a happy family, let's transplant those ideas in the world so that the whole world is a with you. Let's do it. Discovery method. Let's find out how we can do it. Let's do it. Now, let's discuss. Let the ideas come out. I know you are very, very intelligent. Some of the questions that you put the other day, I've suffered in how to answer them. Very, very difficult. Very, very pertinent. Very good question. Now, let us put our minds together, including your leaders, I don't mind it, they also put their minds together. Because as six, we have to work together to make the whole family a happy family. And if, then I want to see, are we doing the thing that you want us to do? Are we doing the thing that the six should be doing according to what gurus have said? If we are not doing, we are failing in our duty. Now, if we are doing but not our approach has been wrong, let's change our approach, right? Because I want you to go out with the idea that whenever anybody meets you in the street, he should be able to say, he is a Sikh. Because he is a Sikh, he is so and so. Because he is so and so. He's... There are so many qualities that he should be able to mention as soon as he sees a Sikh. Nowadays, I was listening to a, a, a girl and I was really 
very much touched by what other people think of us. They seem to think that the same as a terrorist. Far from it. Far from it. We are not. We are not. That is the last thing we will never ever be. Right? So, I want you to go into grip. I have got pencils, I have got papers if you haven't got. Now I'll give you, we would like to finish it. Or I would like to finish it at half past. Even if I can go, you know, five minutes over, still I will be within my time. So I'll give you 15 minutes to get your ideas together. Maybe with grown-ups, your leaders, because we are working together to create a society where we are treat each other as brothers and sisters and on equal footing. Let us see what are the qualities that we should have, the qualities that we should inculcate, we should really produce in ourselves and then go out into the world and say, be the ambassadors of Guru Nanak's teaching that everybody tries to do. Have you got my ideas, what I want from you before you go? Have you? Hands up if you have understood anybody or few people, if fewer, say half a dozen people know what I want you to do, then it's all right. Because I don't want to put words in your mouth. I want you to think rather than tell you what I think. Or gurus have told us, no doubt. But this is not the way I like to do my lessons with the children. Let's find out. Whatever you know, let us see whether you do, do know what you think you know. Right, hands up if you can give me one idea of what you will be thinking when you go into group. Otherwise you will be wasting most of your time. If you haven't got my message, what I want you to do. It appears to me you haven't got my message. Has anybody? No, I'm surprised and you will be wasting. I have prepared a big list and I didn't want to say it. Because if I say these are my ideas, probably you will differ. Now, to get me going, I'll give you one idea. If we are brothers and sisters, what do we do to each other? What are the things we do? With your brothers and sisters, don't say to me we fight. Help. Very good. That is on my list. We help each other. Now, I have... I have Put the catalyst, you see, now Now you will spark off, I know. That's what I intended to do. Now you go out in groups, and if you haven't got, if your group leader hasn't got a pen, pencil, any paper, you get it from me. Very quickly, you go into groups and write down those ideas, please, that within the family, what is it you do for each other so that you are able to speak of our help, care, share. Love, enjoy, company, cooperation, understanding, and truthful. Thank you very much. Five of them are there. I deliberately left this gap. I want to prove that I didn't know much. I'm still hollow. On individual basis, we are, but we have to work collectively, collectively, work together to make this place a place worth living. That is the whole idea, that none of us is complete. Yes, thank you very much. Where do you ourselves to the So far we've got help, love, care, organize, work with each other, uh, give financial help, listen, sacrifice, feed, be humble, uh, teach them good things, advise, and uh, treat all members in their family. Right. Um, basically, we had a few repeats as before. We are to help each other, protect each other, share and care, respect each other, love each other, be polite to one another, teach each other things, play with each other, understanding, keep each other happy, watch television and perhaps eat together. Which you're waving at the From group seven, we've got care, teach, talk, help, listen, sacrifice, feed, Where would you
give lectures to the uh, English people. He said, when you say share it, they said, let's share your wealth. And I didn't say, I haven't got any that I can share. Then I changed it. Share it with the needy. Who are those needy people who are not lucky enough to be worthy? Sick, the disabled, the old, the infirm. You will never see a sick back in anywhere in the world. We create wealth and then out of that we give this one and then that is distributed to the needy. Now how is it that very briefly, within <coughs> five minutes I've got to finish, five minutes or so. So let me very quickly give you the idea how Guru Nanak Dev Ji and our other nine gurus did it. They started two institutions, the two institutions in which most of these things, practically all of them, were practiced. Now, Guru Nanak Dev Ji said that we believe that the whole world, the humankind, means the mankind is one family. Now, he started the institution of, could you think of before I say, anybody can tell me, the very two important institutions in Sikhism, what are they? Can you think? Where we practice all these things. Come on, quick. Sangat and Pangat. Sangat, that is what we are. Pangat is when we sit in a row to eat. Over here, Guru Grasa is our king of kings. Everybody is treated alike. The same equality is there. We will not give any preference to anybody. If the queen gave her any special place, next to queen is the Lord Mayor in a city who represents the queen in her absence. In this Sikh temple, three Lord Mayors came. We made it quite clear to them that you will have to sit as an ordinary person here. And if you accept that, we let you in. Otherwise, thank you very much. We will not break our tradition talk. And they very readily accepted, honestly. I'm pleased to say that. They say, if that is your question, I will agree with you. And that's what did happen. So if there's any distinction here, for, I want to tell you that we are not following the traditions of Sikhism at all. Now, by sitting together, you become a family, you look after each other, you become brothers and sisters, so on and so forth. Then there are lots of other things that which come come together. Many people have said that. I have heard Mr. Gula the other day saying, Pakha Kalna, Pani Toma, all those things, sharing, caring, helping, all those things come to make us a one family. Thus, it also breaks the uh, myth of caste. In, in the, even today, the Brahmins will not touch somebody who is called untouchable. They would have to take a bath. They cast their shadows, if a, an untouchable cast his shadow onto the Brahman, then he will have to have a bath. And in certain areas in the in south of India, the untouchables are not allowed to travel in the morning and in the afternoon. The reason being the shadows are very, very long at that time, and those two times. So, this is what happens. In the north it's alright, it's much, much better than in the south. Now, let's wind, let these two institutions where we get our training. <coughs> Unfortunately, boys and girls and brothers and sisters, our training school, that the training we get here, service, equality, caring, sharing, loving, humility, justice, so on and so forth, finishes here in the four walls of our sick temple. As soon as we put our foot out on the road, we forget all these things. To me, I don't think we have learned much. We haven't learned anything really. A lot of people, including myself, I'm one of those. I'm not going to point my fingers at anybody else, including myself. I'm as much to blame as anybody else that we haven't taken it out. Most of us have not taken it out and treated the whole human.
humanity as I have outlined here. Otherwise, we'll be very popular in the world. Nobody would dare to call us terrorists at all. We haven't proved our world worth to them. What we are, what we stand for, have we? We have not taken up any project, project work like serving the old, infirm, hospices and other things to prove that we care. <coughs> this is what we ought to be doing. Proving to other people that we are the people who care about other people. We help other people, we love other people and we stand for justice. The society nowadays is divided into some of the things I noted down were as follows and we ought to be doing something about it. On the basis of nations, society is divided. I'm an Indian, I'm British, so on and so forth. My loyalties lie with this group, this nation and not with that nation. A Sikh is an internationalist. Here I take argument with the so-called communists who seem to think religion is an opium. To me, they don't know much about that. All that they know is Marxism and you know what they have done, the communist world, Russia and Russia is siding with India to suppress the Sikhs and they call themselves communists. They stand for justice. How can they? How can they? The whole world is divided on the basis of race that my color being white is superior to black color, brown color, etc. Our children daily face this situation. Being a teacher, I know how much victimization I have met in my life. How children's judah is pulled. How children's turbans are knocked down and say, it's only a turban. Why are you so fussy about it? To me, a teacher said to me, I'll knock your turban. I couldn't control myself at that time. I said, you dare. You knock my turban, I'll chop your head off. He said, you won't. I said, you try. When I just stared at him, he says, I was only joking. I said, no, so was I. <laughs> you know, to me, turban is my honor. If somebody accidentally does it, I would say to him, say sorry because that's not what you should be doing. But if somebody deliberately does it, then that is my honor. Integrity, self-respect. Alright? So self-respect for anybody is very important. Somebody did mention one of the things we want is that people should have self-respect. Every individual should have self-respect and we must not injure anybody's feeling. Now, political power is another <laughs> dividing factor, religions, then workers on one side, capitalists on one side, in simple words, rich and poor. Now, is it possible for us to do away with these divisions in some way? All the things that I mentioned that divides us, all the things that you mentioned that will unite us. There are two things now, for and against. Uh, could I have that place? Uh, this place? In the Sikh Center, if you want to take note of those things, I would be more than pleased if any of you got any idea from here, took it away and tried to practice it in the society, outside Sikh society, into the major community to prove that you care for other people, you help other people. <laughs> because so far we have remained mostly within our own community. We haven't been able to make much impact. Fair enough, we had to establish ourselves uh, here in the Sikh temples first. Uh, now is the time for us to go <coughs> on the and with these qualities, with these problems, I want you to 
get up, take the challenge, and make this place a place worth living in heaven. It is on earth. I would like to do one exercise with you to see if you have followed my point. The difference between hell and heaven, I want to see how you will really apply these ideas. I am going to pose you a problem. Right? There's plenty of food in the world, but we have got very big spoons. Very big spoons. And imagine there's plenty of food, and I'm going to give you the spoon. Come out with the idea how you will take that food to survive. That is the spoon that each one of you have, has got it. Now, without going hungry, how will you feed yourself? Plenty of food in the world. Come up with an idea. Because you, one condition, sorry, one condition, you have hold, you have to hold it from one end. You can't hold it here and then say lift it and then feed it. No. Yes. Feed each other. Very, very good. I could never imagine that you will come up. Now, this is what I want you to do. You can't help you. Don't be an individualist. Don't be selfish in life. Help others. Just dig up and put it somebody else's mouth. Somebody else does the same to you. And this, in hell, people try to do it themselves. They couldn't feed themselves. You see, in heaven, that's how people do it. And I think with that example, I leave you to it. And I hope that my contribution will prove to be of some value to you. I have enjoyed talking to you. I have enjoyed working with you. And really, I would love to see you again at some time of the year, anywhere in, you know, Coventry, South or whatever. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you for Sadar Hachan Singh Dua who gave me the privilege, the opportunity to talk to you. Why would you do that? Sadar, why would you do that? I would like to say that 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 of ideas which are applicable in virtual form inside and also outside in the society. Can you, <laughs> can you hear my words, please? No. Thank you. Now, the, it's my duty as well to summarize some of them. And it sounds hypocritical as well, maybe I'm picking on those who haven't been baptized. But like I said, it doesn't mean if you have on earth that you've got a key to heaven. The road is the road is long. You must learn to practice Sikhism. Be honest. Love each other. <laughs> How many of us can honestly say within a day we share so much hatred hatred towards our friends? I mean I myself maybe you know, forget what Forget me, forget me pointing at you. I myself have been hypocritical of my friends. I have lost love of my friends. And until I can learn to love others and treat them equal, I too will go to hell. It's a very hard life, but it can be easy as well. How? Build it up gradually. You're at this good with camp, make the most of it. Don't spend half your time. I think the language you all understand is tossing around. And that's what basically a lot of you are doing from what I've seen in the past 10 years in the camp. Only five or six of you will actually emerge, actually learn a tremendous amount. You all will learn something, I know, but a tremendous amount. And next year, build on it. For example, if you haven't got gears today, build up in keeping your head. Then build up tying a turban. Build up umrah. Build up simra until you become a person so pure and so pure that people will respect you. And whatever you say comes true. Whatever you have no pressures, no worries at all. That's the goal you should be aiming for. Set 
yourself an aim, a goal, and then you'll succeed. Please, we're at such a state, we're at a very vulnerable state, especially in this country. We're forgetting our roots. Our roots, I'm going to point this out, our roots are not doing Pongra and Gita. Let's get this straight. Our roots are Gurmat. <coughs> when you have become acquainted with Gurmat, you will automatically know whether Pangara and Gita or any other activities are, are allowed or not. Then people like myself won't have to tell you because Gurbani will be guiding you. And there is no other guidance you need apart from Gurbani. But then you need some medium to try and understand Gurbani, obviously. And the mediums are books, Rehadanami, Code of Conduct, <coughs> translations, all sorts of mediums like that. You've got to learn, build it up gradually. It's not a matter of just coming to this camp, doing the episode in the morning, a bit of syndrome, have some shinan party in the morning. Okay, fair enough. Go home and look up to your normal selves, and I think you know what your normal selves are. I've been talking around. Try it. Try it for a few months. And I tell you, Guru Maharaj, you'll bless you in some RP Matas. You'll, 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 you'll experience something. <laughs> but do it from here. From here. Some, show some sincerity, some love, <coughs> some conviction. For example, when you're doing Seva, the way to do Seva is not saying, oh, the video camera's watching me. I better, you know, tidy myself up there, do a bit better than I usually do it. Or, Look, I'm doing so much seva. No, selfless seva. You're serving others to make yourself humble. Sometimes you put a lot of money in your pocket, you get a lot of qualifications, and you're in cloud nine. Your head grows the size of a watermelon, and you don't want to talk to other people. I've got friends like that. They've suddenly graduated, and they don't want to know people who have got degrees. The way you control this uh, bar, this man, Mera, mine, this boastfulness is by doing seva and it will bring you down to everybody's level. Humbleness. And then when you link this up with similar and part, you will have a totally balanced life. It's a difficult road, like I said before. Once you've got the basic nitty gritties out of the way, you can only go up. I'd like to uh, give you. <coughs> some understanding of the means sales study Amritali, because this is another question somebody actually asked me today. Sales study Amritali. What's the difference? Does anybody know? I don't think so. Sales study is not that person who's cut his head or is not following the sick way of conduct. Sales study is Sanjay Sanjay Badana, one who increases his knowledge, his way of living slowly. So you could say that a singer, a baptized singer, is a sales guy because he is progressively climbing up the ladder. But as soon as you do something wrong, that sales guy, that, that, uh, that stage of going up slowly up the ladder ceases. So you don't become a sales guy. So that's a sales guy, a person who's progressing slowly. Amaratari, you know, one who is being baptized. So, I've covered what have I covered? I've covered Seva, I've covered Simran, I've covered Nishin. Respect for your Guru and get to know your roots and you'll know why you have to keep your 5Ks there, believe you me. If you don't know your roots, you won't know why you have to keep these 5Ks. I know it sounds a bit, uh, don't think <laughs> it's wrongly, but it's, I think sometimes we uh, become very childish. It's childish. We have a very bad understanding of our own faith. So before you go out and explain to other people what you are, learn yourself what you stand for, what a sick is, what a sing is, what you're required to do. If you've got any problems, go to your elders. If they don't listen, go to somebody who will listen. If nobody listens, you can always ring to us. We're always at your service. You are always going to have problems. You've got to learn to fight. Fight to 
to the end. Not back down, like somebody said earlier on. Don't conform to anybody else's principles. Don't cut corners. Believe in your high principles and you'll be respected for them. <laughs> Please. Not for my sake, for the Bath's sake, for the Khalsa's sake, for your Guru's sake. And you'll be a successful people. Why don't you